dishes. I'm not gonna do this, I'm gonna lie. Okay, so we've literally been getting thrown around anchor all morning. I don't know if you can see by that. Um, it's like a 0.4 meter swell, but it's coming from over there. We're at least now facing almost back into it, whereas before it was coming off the diagonal line at the back, but it's not comfortable. Um, just trying to charge this battery still. Um, last night, it the because I've now wired the other, the old solar controller in, it did do its job and it cut the power off as soon as the battery went below a certain level. But that was after like half an hour. Um, so I'm hoping now today's charging is boosting it, but it's really hard to tell. Before it was sitting at about 12.4, and now it's sitting at 12.7 so maybe it is float charging we're going to leave the engine on for a bit that that is driving me crazy <laughs> i need a solution for that like i don't know i read somewhere that it's meant to be loose but the rudder's literally just banging against at least if the rudder was kept straight i'm gonna to have to google that um yeah I'm gonna go get some gas in a little bit. I forgot what morning that anchor is. Is it six now? Or seven? Six maybe? Um, but yeah, inside here is just turmoil. Like I literally banked my head off the hatch at the front earlier this morning. Um, I'm a little bit worried about this anchor too. Not, I'm. Maybe it's just doing its job, but like how it's not moved while I'm getting thrown around like this, I'm not too sure, but, and it, you know, it's a bit of a rocky coast. You can maybe see the, the area I'm in is supposed to be sand, but you know, it's just my look at hit a rock, but, well not hit a rock, but attached against a rock. I'm trying to make myself look a little bit more presentable so you might be wondering what I'm doing with a razor blade because obviously you don't shave. I just tried to tidy the side up but it's not an easy task while the boat's moving this much. Especially when I don't just want to like cut half of my beard off but if I prop myself up against the door. I don't know why, it's not like we're going anywhere. You've got to look after yourself the best you can, don't you? It's a bit better. Really, you could do a shower. So, I'm going to have to just pour some, some water on myself. I think. So, the swell I was on about, it's not really the height of the wave that's the problem. Like, it's about 0.4 three, four meter swell. Can't really see it there. But it's more the um, interval between the waves. So that's like a two second interval. So what that does rather than going over the wave, down, and then a bit of calm, and then over the wave and down, it's every two seconds. So what it does is it just creates a seesaw effect. So it feels like I'm just on a permanent seesaw basically. You can see from the front of the boat, as soon as it dips back off one wave the next waves as the next wave is already here if you're watching from the uk i know the waves tend to be more spread out but it's like well known in the med you get these short intervals between the wave so rolling over down and calm and rolling over wouldn't be so bad however when it's just bobbing up and down that's that's what makes it a bit worse than it is um Likewise, to go now to land with a dinghy, I've got to go against like a bit of a current, which I'm not sure without the second oar that I lost, how easy that will be. I've got like the two paddles that it's like an oar split in half, but um, they're not easy to get like a good, um, any power really. Uh, but I've got some fuel for the outboard motor, but uh, 
I lost a cap for the top of the outboard motor. I'm trying to find something that fits because the problem is when I then go over there, I've got to lift the motor up, which would then tip the fuel out. So I'm just trying to find a solution. I looked at Antique Port, it's like 33 euros per night and that's not including water and electricity which I'd rather not pay that much because add water and electricity to that you're probably looking at about 43 for a night which is quite a lot um, as well I've left it a bit late in the day to go back in the day sorry to go back towards golf plan but maybe tomorrow i go back towards golf one where i think it's about 18 per night and we'll go back into port for a few nights and try get solar panels sorted and then if we're going to be at anchor for a bit we need to go to the shop get loads of supplies and we do better off over by the islands where we were it makes doing any work a bit harder but if we go there while i kind of get myself sorted out line up some bits of work and if I've got the bits of work confirmed, then go back into Golf One. Um, but we'll see. But yeah, for today, I'm gonna go back over to land for a bit because um, I've been in these waves for a bit long <laughs> this morning. Uh, I need to get that gas bottle filled up so that I can cook inside because the oven is gimbaled and the cooker's gimbaled, but to cook on this outside it's not so easy when the boat's rocking uh, to try to keep the pan on top of the flames um, and i went to go buy some fire lighters for this barbecue that i found found i don't remember if i actually videoed that i found that but i was really happy about it like it's really cool it's, these mounts alone are really expensive um, and someone was throwing it so i'm going to see if i can get it cleaned up a bit but it's even as it is, it's useful. Um, but the fire lighters were like eight euros, which is that how much fire lighters cost? <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, yeah. So we're gonna go over there. I've got loads of washing to do. This time when I get it done, probably at the laundrette, and I'm gonna just wash it every day, but it's quite a lot to hand wash and get dry. So we're gonna do that. Possibly today as well. So we're going to load the dinghy up. I should have really anchored over to that end of the port so that I could get in a bit easier with the dinghy because yesterday it took ages to go do the whole length of the port and then back in in the dinghy and it used quite a lot of fuel which is a bit of a waste. Um, but I suppose my clothes bag will be in the laundrette so it's not like I can't then go to the shop as well and then just try to get as much back as I can so that's the plan so we're gonna try replace one of these it was a little bit corroded on the inside and it weren't connected as well as it should have been so we've taken the old one off I'm gonna go see if we can find one of them if it's not like the solar controller we're not gonna be able to find it and I had some spares of them but I've looked everywhere and I can't find I can't find them but I checked with a multimeter and there is power coming from that solar panel so if we can get that fixed we might be a step closer but yeah the seesawing I was on about before is like taking its toll now a little bit it's just if you're not doing anything it's not so bad it's when you're then trying to do something and you then stop looking and i have not got seasick for a while um i wouldn't say i'm there now either but it's there's still like it's just not ideal but um i just want the electric to be sorted to be honest that's the main thing um but we'll go see if they've got any of them I would, I'm not holding my breath because I didn't have anything to do with anything solar yesterday but we're going to go try Even just getting in the dinghy then was hard work You can see how much the boat's bouncing around Maybe, I don't know because I'm still bouncing around And very quickly I'm halfway to them rocks over there So oh, I need to start rowing <laughs> The dinghy is full of water as well somehow I just cleared it the other day 
and I can't find a lid that will fit that. Well, that one not fit. I think I tried this one before. so bad but then you've got to go on to land and people just don't get it in the normal world when you show it to all wet. Today's testing my patience, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Right, I've stopped uh, my moaning for the time being. <laughs> I am worried about the boat being there. I can't pretend otherwise. That's probably almost as strong a wind as it's been in. The forecast said six. This is another reason I'd quite like to have the actual um, wind thing working because it's definitely stronger than six. Like if, if I knew it was this, gonna be this strong I'd have sailed back to Golf One today I think because the wind's blowing from the east 
so it would have taken us all right in the direction we needed to go um, yeah quite nicely actually almost perfectly but it said it was only blowing six knots so with just the mainsail I didn't fancy that um, this is the little bay where I bring the dinghy in but you can, the waves don't look that big but when you're in the dinghy earlier they seemed quite big so yeah what do we do go get back on the boat because it's um, making me feel on edge but also sometimes I'll admit it it's nice to be on steady ground not for too long but just for a little bit and especially when it's like that and I'm meant to be going for tea somewhere tonight so the problem is leaving the boat at anchor but my uh, interactions with humans are very um, <laughs> few and far between so it would be nice to go oh man I can just see the boat I can see how much it's just pulling on that chain and there's no way of you lot seeing how much that's rocking up and down anyway yeah I'd think when I come into this little bay I'd think it's like be really cool there's no other dinghy on the beach but no one bad scenarios no one cares um it's a yacht, yacht, yachty isn't it so the world's apart and I was thinking last night just how much different even even sailing is like for me it's living on the boat and the adventure and all the rest of it and then here sailings you know regattas and races and completely different sort of sort of thing um, yeah I wouldn't do very well in a race going two knots maximum <laughs> but uh, yeah I'm gonna head back over there and if the wind dies down I've got to come get the train back to Cannes to go for tea if not I can't I can't leave the boat I can see it now if I saw that move I'm in the water swimming over there jumping on and turning the engine on as quick as I can I've got a feeling the anchor's probably stuck because I don't actually know how it's holding out it's making me feel funny watching it this is a nightmare and now my new nightmare is how to get onto the boat like that back platform if you get it wrong probably knock me out quite easily oh man <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to move the boat like just pulling up to it and seeing just how much it's like hammering against these waves probably means I'm gonna have to move like it's nowhere near the advertised swell like or wind for that matter although now we've got out here it seems a bit less but from this morning that was meant to be the worst of it and that was six and then it was dying down as the day went on to around about four but it's done the opposite and it's definitely gone up I don't know how to get on, but we've got bags and stuff too. Like, just how much that's going up and down. SD cards, the SD card's nearly full, so I'm gonna have to make this super quick. Got back onto the boat, and the wind, I looked on the app, and it's still saying around about the same, but it was in knots, not kilometers. Anyway, when I clicked on the live wind, it's blowing 20. Uh, fairly consistently even though it's advertising as gusts the boat is everywhere like that's you know that's not a 0.3 meter swell that's oh that that sort of swells all right when you're sailing when you when you sat here it's not all right the boat's now facing a different way to what it was before i've looked on the boat enough and the, the waypoint does seem a little bit off um where it was but obviously the boat's turned what half a circle so it's not gonna be in the same place because I took the measurement from the back of the boat so although that now looks alarmingly close I do think we're holding I'm gonna turn the engine on uh, I'm gonna just have to wait it out which is part of living on a boat I think um, this is a bit people don't get sometimes like it's 
it, you, even checking the wind, I still, you know, in the south of France, people keep saying, but in the south of France, but with the south of France, you have the super high cost of everything. Um, so, you know, to, to stay in a port in the south of France, it's costing more than people's average rent or mortgage. So for that reason, I tried to not stay in the port and then get myself in these situations. Anyway, you've got to make up decisions and my decision is going to be that I'm going to put the engine on, pulling the anchor up while the boat's literally the bow is going touching the water um, like a big seesaw because it's two meters uh, two seconds between each wave there's no way of showing you just how much it's bouncing up and down but if i was to try pull the anchor up now while it's bouncing i know how dangerous that is so i'm better off leaving it in for now turning the engine on if i see that i'm drifting any more towards them rocks i will put it into forwards and then try pull the anchor um, it gets deeper as it goes out so it's not the ideal way of doing it but also neva's pulling on that chain while it's um bobbing up and down like that's half the reason i need to fit the manual windlass because then i can wrench it up and it's taking the tightness but pulling it up i've done it before when it goes back down it takes it takes you with it and you know there's plenty of things you can get your arm wrapped on or stuck on and if something happens while i've got the anchor half out of the water it's not going to take long to drift over towards them rocks over there so i'm going to leave the engine running so i'm ready in case i do move i've not anchored in this much wind before or in this much swell before it's nerve-wracking nerve-wracking it's a little bit like scary and it's my home at the end of the day so ideally don't want it to go and crash into the rocks over there would it make a good YouTube episode? Probably, but it's not going to replace the boat, is it? So, or me if I get hurt, which should be more important than the boat, I know. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. SD card is nearly full, so I'm going to plug it into the laptop, but at the minute I'm just trying to watch that I'm not going towards them rocks, so that's what I'm going to have to put my focus on. So. If I do crash, I'll try quickly get the GoPro out. That's the other thing. I'd crash, but the GoPro would be full, so <laughs> it wouldn't be my priority to record if I crashed into them rocks over there. But I don't think I'm going to. Touch wood. 